Today we're looking at the Battle of Lexington and Concord. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. So on the night of April 18, 1775, British troops stationed in Boston began a nighttime march towards Concord, Massachusetts, located about 18 miles west. Their mission was to capture a stockpile of weapons that they suspected were being kept there by the Sons of Liberty and Patriot supporters. As they began their march, riders such as Paul Revere and William Dawes rode out ahead of them warning the Massachusetts militia, otherwise known as the Minutemen because they could be ready to fight at a minute's notice, that the British were coming or the British were on their way. At Lexington, Massachusetts, about 11 miles west of Boston, 77 militiamen began to gather to stop the 700 approaching British. Remember, militia is basically citizen soldiers who serve in an emergency. These were farmers and craftsmen who came out with their hunting guns to fight. This was not a professionally trained army like the British troops that were approaching. The militia in Lexington began to assemble at 1 a.m. on the morning of April 19, 1775 at Lexington Common or Lexington Green, which was kind of the open area in the middle of Lexington. They waited and waited but saw no British troops approaching. Many of them decided to go and wait inside a nearby tavern until they heard something. At 4.30 a.m., they heard the sound of approaching drums, and they rushed out to form up to repel the approaching British troops. Two columns of militia lined up, facing hundreds of British. The British commander ordered that the militiamen lay down their guns and disperse. Just then, a single shot was fired. To this day, no one knows for sure who fired first, but that shot has come to be known as the shot heard around the world because not only did it ignite the American Revolution, but following the American Revolution, several other revolutions would break out across the world. Once that shot was fired, the British began firing volleys into the militiamen's lines while the militiamen tried to fire back. When the smoke cleared, eight militiamen were dead, nine were wounded, and only one British soldier was wounded. The militiamen ran and the British resumed their march, but now the British and American colonists had officially traded gunfire, so the American Revolution had officially begun. As they continued their march to Concord, the, the British ransacked homes along the way, looking for any sign of weapons or resistance. At about 7 a.m., the British arrived in Concord, only to find a few cannons, but the bulk of the weapons had been moved by the militia before the British arrived. The British searched the town for several hours and set fire to many of the structures in town. Little did they know, though, that while they were searching for weapons, that hundreds upon hundreds of Massachusetts militiamen had descended upon Concord. By 9.30 a.m., the British start to come under fire at a bridge north of Concord, and by noon, the British begin to retreat as now the 700 British troops sent to capture the weapons are facing a force of over 2,000 militia, with more arriving every minute. The retreat back to Boston for the British turned into an all-out sprint as the British were coming under fire the entire 18 miles back to Boston. Many British troops dropped their guns and equipment so that they could run faster to get back to Boston. Despite the fact that British reinforcements were sent out from Boston to protect the retreat, the British were still just too overwhelmed. By the day's end, nearly 3,500 militiamen had arrived to push back the British. Of the 700 British troops that marched to Concord, 250 Redcoats were killed or wounded, compared to 90 killed or wounded for the Americans. The militia now began to close in on Boston and surrounded the city with the British trapped inside. The siege of Boston would last for almost another year and would include the Battle of Bunker Hill, which uh, occurred in June of 1775. After years of disagreement and protest, the British and the Americans had finally openly engaged in battle. Although they, there would still be some efforts to keep peace, the differences between the two sides would lead to the Americans declaring independence and a full-scale war that would last for the next eight years. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.